Over the last few weeks, I've been getting a bunch of questions whether you should get an XT5 or an XH2S or an XT4 or an XT5 or an XH2 or an XT5 and any combination that you can imagine. So to answer all of these questions, I decided to put together this very hopefully short video just to give you my thoughts on all of these options. I will cover the X-T3, X-T4, X-T5, X-H2 and X-H2S. Currently I own the X-H2S and the X-T5. I've also owned and used extensively the X-T3 and the X-T4. Now I don't own an X-H2, I've used it briefly. However, an X-H2 is a bit of a mashup between the S and the X-T5. So I feel like I'm in a good enough position to give you my opinion on that camera. Speaking of opinions, just to give you a bit of context, I've been using Fujifilm cameras since 2018, and I use them for street photography, travel photography, as well as making these YouTube videos. However, this is not a review. This is simply an overview of all the main features and what you should consider if you are in a position to be looking at one of these cameras. And finally, if you actually care about photography, I suggest popping back for the next video because this will be a very gear heavy discussion. If size and weight is a huge factor for you, then hands down go for the X-T3, X-T4 or X-T5. Now the X-T4 is a tiny bit bigger and heavier than the other two, however not to the point where you will really notice a difference unless you start comparing and measuring. However, if you're not traveling, hiking or basically taking your camera with you everywhere you go, then maybe the X-H line of cameras might provide additional value and features, but obviously in a bigger and heavier package. And finally, keep in mind that even small increments in size and weight do add up if you are walking around all day with a camera around your neck. For example, I can walk around for longer with my X-T5 and let's say the 33mm prime than the X-HS2 with a zoom lens before I start to feel a bit uncomfortable. At the end of the day, it all depends on your use case. Personally, I have both and I know the trade-off of bringing the bigger camera because I'll be using it for a specific purpose. Whereas if I'm going to be walking around all day, I'll bring the X-T5 because I know it'll be a little bit easier on my neck after 10, 20 miles walked. There isn't a clear winner here because it all depends on your personal preferences and the use case. Now, to me, the X-T5 does feel better in hand, but that's because I have small hands. If you have normal size hands, you might find that the X-H2 grip is better. And as a matter of fact, most people do. Every time I speak to anyone who've tried both cameras, they prefer the X-H grip, especially if they come from more traditional uh, full-frame cameras, which do have the bigger grip. However, as much as I prefer the X-T5, I only prefer it with a smaller prime lens. The moment I attach a bigger, heavier lens, like the 50 to 140 for example then the xh2 wins out because that grip really balances well with the bigger lenses whereas the xt5 the moment you attach those lenses it is very front heavy and you definitely have to use both hands and be let's say very steady when you take photos the X-H line of cameras do seem to be built better, which kind of makes sense because they are meant to be the flagships. Certainly comparing this X-H2S to the X-T5, there are quite a few noticeable differences in build quality. The X-H2S seems to use better quality materials, the buttons feel a bit better when you press them, and generally just feels a little bit more solid. The X-T3 and the X-T4 are comparable in quality. However, I personally feel that with the X-T5, they have slightly reduced the quality of the materials. Now, does it feel cheap? No, it doesn't. But if you start to compare them, then it does feel like a little bit of a downgrade in material quality. Now, I can't speak about the reliability of the X-H2 or the X-T5 just yet because I've just not had them for long enough. However, with the X-T4 and the X-T3, I did have some water ingress issues, shooting in very heavy rain, and a couple of times the top dials did fail when they had sand inside them from shooting in the desert or again, water ingress. Now, looking at other people's experiences and my own experiences, I would say it seems like that the traditional top dials, as cool as they are, on the XT line do seem to be a weakness in the camera's build quality. Personally, if I had to go into a condition which I know would be very uh, difficult, whether it's heavy rain, sand, dirt, I would probably pick the X-H2S or X-H2 over the XT, simply because you just don't have all of those extra points of failure at the top. 
In general, there are only really two usability things that you need to decide on. First of all, do you want the traditional Fujifilm dials like you have on the XT cameras, or do you want a more modern PSAM approach that you have on the XH2? And the other thing to decide is, do you want a flip out screen for video like this one so I can see myself, or do you want an articulating screen which has a smaller footprint? From my experience, the traditional top dials on the XT cameras are superior for photography. However, for hybrid work or pure video work, I prefer the X-H2. Also, the little top screen on the X-H2 and the X-H2S is definitely a lot more useful than I originally thought it would be. I use it quite a lot. Moving on to the screens, what I found is that the flip out selfie screen is only really useful if you're filming yourself. Because then I can set up the shot, I can see myself, I can get a rough idea and start filming without having to run around all the time. However, for videography, for photography, for anything which involves you being behind the camera and not in front of it, the articulating screen on the X-T5 and the X-T3 is superior because it's a smaller footprint, it's quicker to deploy, and generally, it's easier to frame things when you can look at them directly with the camera, sort of like that, rather than looking off to the side and trying to gauge where the center is, because it can be a bit of putting at least initially when you start using an articulating screen. Oh, and a couple of smaller points. Obviously, if you like to use bigger battery grips of your cameras, then the X-T5 is not even an option because it can't take it. And if battery life is critical to you, then you need to get any camera that's not the X-T3 because the X-T3 is the only one that uses the older batteries, which suck. Okay, so this will upset a few pixel peepers, but honestly, there isn't that much difference between all of these cameras. Sure, the X-T5 has a few more megapixels, and the X-H2S will be better in low light and have a faster readout. And in general, the images out of the X-T5 and the X-H2S overall look a little bit more punchy and a little bit cleaner. However, if you took a bunch of photos and all of these cameras from the X-T3 all the way to the X-H2S, and then you've put them all together, you muddled them up, and you ask someone to pick out, okay, is that the X-T3 or is that the X-H2? Most people, or I would say all people, wouldn't be able to pick out which is which. Of course, if you start zooming in and studying each pixel and comparing them side by side, you might start to see some differences, especially with a larger sensor. However, generally speaking, for most people, they will not really notice any difference. Now, personally, if I had to choose, I would go for the larger megapixel sensor, mainly because I like to crop and it just gives me a bit more room to play with in terms of resolution. As you'd expect, the latest cameras do have the best autofocus. The X-H2S is a little bit quicker and more accurate compared to the X-T5 and the X-H2. However, not to the point where that would be a big purchasing decision. Saying that the X-T3 and the X-T4 are still plenty good enough for most people. If you rely on the absolute best autofocus and you can't afford to miss the moment, then the X-H2S is the one I would go for. If you want very good eye detect for portraits or even subject detect for cars, birds, etc., then the X-H2 and the X-T5 will be great for that. However, if you mainly take photos of your holidays, street photography, landscape photography, and just general photography that most of us do, the X-T3 and the X-T4 will be more than good enough for that. There's only one big feature to consider really, and that's IBIS. Put simply, if you don't care about IBIS or if all your lenses that you own are stabilized, then the X-T3 will be great. However, if you know that you will be shooting at lower shutter speeds, you have shaky hands, or maybe you prefer longer lenses, then honestly, having IBIS is a benefit. If you look at JPEG settings and Fujifilm profiles, all the core and the main settings and film simulations will be present across all cameras. However, if you want certain specific looks that are only applicable to the X-T5 or the X-H2, then obviously you'll have to go for them. Now, Fuji do say, and they do update their firmware for the older cameras, but it's not always as consistent in terms of knowing that 100% this film simulation will come to your X-T3. So if a particular simulation is like, I must have it, then obviously you'll have to go for the newer camera. If you love using the viewfinder, and you want to have the closest experience to having an optical viewfinder, then the only camera to really consider is the X-H2 or the X-H2S because it has the best quality viewfinder. The X-T cameras still use the last generation, which is not bad, but comparing the two, there will be a clear difference. And finally, the X-T5 and the X-H2 will have a huge megapixel stitching feature, which will give you like an insane file. 
However, that only really works for still life subjects. The moment something moves even a tiny bit, that will completely destroy it. And there's a huge post-processing workflow that comes with it. So as amazing as that feature sounds, it's not for everyone. Now, if you're finding this video useful, I just want to quickly plug my camera guides that I've made for the X100V, the X-T3 and the X-T4. These are not meant to replace your camera user guides that you get your camera, but they are my take on how to set up these cameras and how to get the most out of them. I cover all the main settings, both for photo and for video, as well as settings that I personally use in these cameras to get the most out of them. They're quite comprehensive. It'll take you a while to get through it. However, I do honestly believe that they will fast track you from you know just getting a camera to getting the most out of your camera. So if you want to support the channel and me and you want to learn more about your X-T4, X-T3 or X100V Fuji, I've linked them down below now i'm sure the question will come the xt5 and the xh2s camera guides they will come later this year i need a lot more time with the cameras before i can release something unlike photography in my opinion this is where there is a very clear winner and that's the xh2s the footage has more dynamic range appears less digital and sharp and overall has that cinematic look about it which the other cameras at least in my opinion don't have that out of the box without further editing. In well-controlled environments, you can definitely get all cameras to look the same. However, when the environment is out of your control or you have a lot of contrast, that's where you do see the X-H2S just shine through over all the other cameras. Does this mean that the X-T3 and the X-T4 are written off? Of course it doesn't. However, what I would say is if you are a video first person, I would look at the later cameras. However, if you enjoy doing video as a hobby on the side, it's not the main thing for you, then the X-T3 and the X-T4 will be absolutely good for that as well. Same as with the photography, if you want the best autofocus in video, you want to be looking at the X-H2S. The X-H2 and the X-T5 are both still very, very good. However, there is a tiny bit of a difference. And if you're relying on AF for video, then this is the best system you can get. Now, this is where I would say there is a huge difference between the X-T4 and the X-T3 and newer generation cameras. So if the difference between the X-T5 and the X-H2S is like this, the difference between the X-T4 and the X-T5 is more like this. And obviously the X-H2S, the difference is even bigger. So if you are relying on eye tracking, if you are relying on subject tracking or general stickiness of the autofocus, then I would look at the newer generation cameras. This is where we're starting to see an even bigger difference between the XH line of cameras and the XT cameras. Put simply, the XH cameras have a lot more video specific features that the XTs don't have. However, these features are only really useful to people who take their video extremely seriously or even make money from video. The XH2S will let you record in 6K using the entire sensor give you 4K 120 and have a much faster readout speed, so less rolling shutter. Whereas the X-H2 will give you an 8K image, however, you're not getting the other features. Personally, what I would say is if your camera is always on a tripod and you're filming still subjects, the 8K X-H2 might be better because you can then crop in more and recompose. Whereas if you're always running and gunning with a camera out and about or filming motion, then the X-H2S will be better in my opinion. Both the X-H cameras will let you shoot in ProRes, which is an absolute dream to edit. However, to store it is a pain in the ass because the file sizes are enormous. Not to mention that you have to use these CF Express cards now, which are more expensive, as well as getting a CF Express card reader, which again adds to the cost. And finally, both cameras let you use the photometry settings that you have in photography, but for video. This just lets you be a lot more creative with your shots. Now, the X-T5 lets you shoot in 6K as well, albeit at a lower quality. It also lets you have the photometry settings, which is good, but it skips out on everything else that I've mentioned. And finally, the X-T3 and the X-T4 don't really get anything that I've just talked about. A few other small differences to keep in mind. The X-T5 still comes with dual SD card slots, whereas the X-H cameras, as I've said, will come with an SD and a CF Express. The X-T5 and the X-H2 cameras also have other smaller improvements throughout the user experience. More customizable function buttons, more customizable menus, and a general speed boost when you're using the menus, navigating, changing settings, things like that. And the final thing to think about is the specific use case. So for instance, if you're gonna be shooting in busy markets in cities, 
activities, you don't want to be walking around with a huge camera looking like a professional because it'll just attract attention. Whereas if you're going to be shooting wildlife, then you do want a bigger body for the bigger lenses. So it's something to think about when you're looking at which camera to get. Now let's talk about cost and value. Right now, in my opinion, the best value for money Fujifilm camera is a second-hand X-T4. You can pick up a mint used X-T4 for around a thousand pounds, and if you don't mind a bit of a wear and tear, I've seen them go for as little as 850. Now you can save even more money by getting an X-T3. However, if the features like IBIS and a better battery life are important to you, then I would definitely suggest spending a bit more money on the X-T4. Now, if you want one of the newer systems, the best value for money is the X-H2 because it's only a fraction more expensive than the X-T5, but you are getting a lot more features for your money. However, keep in mind that there is the extra cost of the CF Express card, but if you shop around, you can find a pretty good deal. Also, you don't need to get the CF Express card to read You can always just plug the camera straight into your laptop or just use the CF Express as your permanent internal backup and then take your SD card in and out to transfer files. And finally, the X-T5 and the X-H2S, at least in my opinion, are not the best value for money cameras for most people. Of course, if you need them for their own niche purposes, they're great. If you make your money from this like I do, great. But for most people, they just don't need them. If you're on an extremely tight budget, get a Fujifilm X-T2. If your main focus is photography and you don't shoot sports or wildlife, get the X-T3 or the X-T5. If your main focus is photography and you do shoot sports or wildlife, get the X-T5 or the X-H2. If you're a diehard sports or wildlife photographer and you make your money from that, get the X-H2S. If you're a video or a hybrid shooter, get the X-T4, especially a used one. If you want to take video a little bit more seriously, get the X-H2. If you want the absolute best video quality and performance out of a Fuji body, get the X-H2S. If you want a two camera system for both photo and video, I would say get the X-T4 for video and then an X-T3 for photography. And of course, if money is no issue or if you want the best quality because you do this for work, then get an X-T5 and an X-H2S. Okay, that's everything for this video. I hope it was a quick one and I hope it just gave you an overview of my thoughts and opinions on all of these questions. So if you're watching this video, you've probably found it through YouTube or I've directed you to it from Instagram or wherever else I get asked these questions. Um, of course, if you have further questions, please leave them down below, but keep in mind, I don't know all the answers. Um, so hopefully if I can't answer, then someone else might have figured it out and answered it for you in the uh, comment section. Okay, that is all. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. Thank you for the support and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.